Okay, let's go through the the list. Now this is part two, uh, part two of the um, Meisner repetition. Uh, sorry, Meisner um, independent activities. So you've got your independent activities is a list of independent activities for the exercises, but it's also a list that if you're really um, clever, you can start to use any of this list in your acting, in your scenes, in your uh, doors, in your activities. Uh, back in the day, they used to be called ins and outs uh, back in New York City. So let's look at this and see. Now, the first one I have on the list here for part two is uh, uh, these are non logical repetitive doings 50 swan animal napkins so you can fold 50 now the reason why you want to put 50 is you want to be able to make it difficult enough so if you just if you, you could just make it one or you can make it three but if you if you made it 50 that could be uh, included and uh, interesting um, hot gluing ornaments cleaning now you could clean. Now you want to be very specific. What type of cleaning are you doing? Are you waxing the floor? Are you cleaning, uh, sweeping? Are you cleaning? And be very, very, very specific on your cleaning job. Waxing a surfboard. Great, great uh, independent activity. Uh, getting stain out of a rug. That's a great, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, you could take uh, some wine and just throw it on the rug. So you get the, the, the wine on the rug, it's stained, and then just try and make sure it's something that's at least somewhat cleanable, and then, then work to clean it. And that would be a great activity. And then, you just see that this is something that, that needs to be included in more films. So you, you set the actor up in the, in the film, and you'd throw a bunch of wine, the producer would throw a bunch of wine on the rug, right? And then have that be part of the scene. So you include this as part of the scenes, but these are also for acting exercises. So uh, steam pressing fabric, you could steam press fabric. Um, ironing a decal on a clothing. So um, you could iron a decal. You could do um, put one of these shibby unus or whatever they're called patches on the the jacket or the clothing. It's kind of cool. You could iron iron on. Um, uh, bending, uh, binding books together. You want to bind the books together. Now, re realize I'm dyslexic, so um, I'm working with the non-dyslexic font right now, but I have a dyslexia font on the website, uh, Emotional Preparation. And uh, there's one, there's a couple that are free and there's a couple that are paid. Um, so the irony decals, we got binding books, we got blowing up balloons, which I actually have that already in a further up list. But there's there's a three different types of blowing up balloons. You could do the mechanical ones, the machine. You could do a hand blown balloons. You do a couple different specific things with that with that element. There's um, paint stripping a table. You, you could sand the the table paint layer off, which would which would essentially be paint stripping, or you could get that stuff from the store that, that actually you have to put on, put it on the, the, the table or the, the object that the paint's on, and you have to just very carefully scrape it off, and you scrape it off to get down to the wood. Right. This is one I've never seen, the cleaning, cleaning the copper pipe. So. You're cleaning a copper pipe. <laughs> now, you could do that with sandpaper. You could do that with a rag with a solution. You could use some hydrogen peroxide. Really try and get the surface clean. Uh, another thing you can do is actually, uh, not to be rude, but you can use urine on um, any type of urine on copper and it will actually tarnish it. Uh, cut you can cut out stencils so this is um, literally creating your own stencils so this is a creation of uh, of your own of your own stencils 
You could add Velcro to cardboard. So you could, you could glue on or apply Velcro to cardboard. And then you could have something that you're making so that it's Velcroing shut, opening up, Velcroing shut, opening up. It could be, um, you can get very creative with this. You could make it like a, like a little frog mouth that Velcros down and Velcros up. And that would be the reason why you'd have to have Velcro on either side of the frog's mouth. You know, that would be interesting. Um, designing letters. So you could design letters. Um, now, I've designed my own font. That would be its own uh, separate one. Um, uh, creating a font um, as an activity. But the thing about that is it's a little bit heady, but not. there's a lot of application to it. But you could design letters in, in different ways. Um, uh, you have to isolate what that is for you because you could be designing some people when uh, they're working to design a font, and I've done this myself, where um, you draw out the font first. So you're designing a, a new font or you're designing a new um, uh, ledger, or the, um, letters. So you're designing the letters. You could also be doing designing letters for um, uh, designing letters for the for a logo uh, logo design. And you know how like on the uh, sometimes there's a capital S or a capital B or whatever in the on the email or stuff, and what it is it's the first last name so you want to design those two letters so you can design those letters and, and you can make that design and that's that's a, a viable independent activity so um that's involved of course you add all these other things to it like the uh, motivation is the thing that's often missing in the classrooms i have seen over twenty thousand uh over when i say over i mean over <laughs> i mean it's it's closer to 40,000, but I'll just say 20,000 exercises in acting classes. I've, I've attended well over, over 5,000 acting classes. So um, I know a thing or two about this. Um, okay, next one is um, screwing bolts into books. Now this is, this is incredible. You could, you could drill a hole into a book. And, and then you could assemble a, a bolt that goes into the book. And I don't know what it would be useful for, but I think it's interesting. I had the idea. And I've never seen that in the classrooms. And I thought, you know, this would be a good activity that I'm thinking of. And I don't no idea why I thought of that. But it's, it's, it's a, you can just literally take a little drill, drill it through the book, a couple different spots, and then you could put a bolt through through the book and um, it's it, interesting so next one is painting animal rocks now with all of these things having to do with um, uh, artistic you want to get you, you might be better if you have an actual um, design to work from so you design what you're going to put on the rock to paint on the rock, then you go find a rock somewhere, then get some paints, and 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 uh, put the design on the rock. Yarn weaving pattern. Um, you could do very specific yarn weaving patterns. You could be folding animal napkins, which is similar to the to the animal swan napkins. You could be finding a mouse. Now, finding a mouse, you could give yourself the activity to find a mouse. But if you're going to do this, you're going to have to have this as a, uh, like an activity. You want to have somebody uh, probably drop some mouse droppings in a corner or something. You want to have some evidence of the mouse that you'd like to try. And, I mean, I've seen this work for people. In classes where they're looking for something like that or they're looking for their key that's another one you could go and look for a key um, 
and they're looking all these places for a key or an object. It can work. But it's a little bit tricky, but it is nice because you don't need anything. You don't need any anything other than your self involvement. And so you could you could be looking for a mouse or trying to figure out where the mouse is. It would be more uh, practical for a, a scene. So you add somebody looking for the mouse in the scene. And when you add that for the scene, all of a sudden you've got this independent doing. You've got this independent activity that you're doing. And this independent activity is, is fantastic. You can be really involved in looking for, you know, your keys or looking for a mouse. Okay, let's go to the next, uh, down, the, down the list. Framing a picture. Now, if you've ever framed a picture, you've got to get the mat of the frame and you frame out the picture and you've got to take all these measurements, make sure it's exactly how it is. Now, you could do a simple um, rectangle shape over the picture. But if you're going to use this as an activity, you could also put this in like a heart shape or like put it in a cloud shape or you could like make some kind of specialized design. So you, you're, you're specifically doing a certain design. Maybe it's a design of a, something that you know the person really likes that you're doing this for. And that's the, the part of the motivation that you've included. Um, or you're doing this for yourself and you're going to leave this at somebody's grave and you've got to, you know, you really knew that that person liked that certain design. That would be the way. Um, making balloon animals next on the list. You could um, make balloon animals. You could give yourself a time frame, obviously, uh, to see if you could, I mean, you could... Literally, a separate one from that would be making balloon animals um, on time frame. Um, because uh, practicing uh, being able to do a certain shape. So you want to be able to do a certain shape of an animal so there's a dog. Now, if you look at some of those people that do this work, um, they're quick. They'll have a lineup of um, sometimes 50 people, you know, or whatever event. There are a group of people around them, and everybody wants one of these animals. And they'll just, boom. So you could literally set a timer down. And your goal is that if you're able to achieve this test, then maybe you can get a job at this, at the whatever, the fairground or something. So you're doing the balloon animal. That wouldn't be a bad idea. It could work. It could work good. Okay, this is a fun one. I thought of this. I've never seen this in the classroom yet. Um, you take helium and you do a helium voiceover. So you take in helium and you do a voiceover. And um, then you record the voiceover. And that's that's... The, that's the, the activity. Um, that's that's a, a pretty funny one. Now, assembling a book a bookshelf. Now you could assemble a book a bookshelf or a bookcase, and get all the pieces out. Go to the store, buy the bookcase, bring it in, and lay out all the pieces and and work out to be able to assemble the bookcase. Now try and make sure you've got everything you need for that activity. It would really suck to be able to not have the screwdriver, you know, for an activity um, uh, to assemble a bookcase. So make sure you have that with you. Um, okay, creating a personal magnet. Now there's a few different ways you could do this. You could be doing this um, electronically. Uh, in Photoshop, or uh, I hope they don't mind me saying something about them, um, but in Photoshop, or there's one called GIMP, G-I-M-P, GIMP, and that's actually a, 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 a program that does it does a, a design, so you can do vector vector program uh, that you can use, and you can actually use that. Um, 
to do magnets. So you could make a, you could electronically design a magnet. Then you could also draw one. Um, there is a, a few kits that there is uh, that do exist that can um, you can color in a magnet that's already in a shape. You can draw out more on the on the design and color it in, and, and then you put that on your fridge. Now you could do something that's that's comes from a kit like that, uh, but the more creative that you work with that in an element to personalize it for what you need, the better it's going to be. Okay, organizing colored files. So this would be a task or an uh, independent activity or an independent doing that is uh, organizing colored files. So what you want to do is you want to organize all of the different files by color. Now you could also do the same thing organizing uh, files or papers by size. So, um, some people organize their offices that way. They'll have different sizes. So they'll have one that's legal size, one that's letter size, and they'll have two different sizes. So you might have to go through a pile of papers, separate the legal size with the with the with the letter size, and that might be the task. But you could include a bunch of different ideas with that. Um, it could be uh, actual pieces of paper that are, are the sizes and you could also um, do that by color. So maybe there's a color tab on the side of the paper and the, all, the, all the pages with the um, uh, red or the blue tab that goes off the page has to be put in one pile and all the green ones have to be put in another. So that would be the, uh, the way um, that would be the way to work with that. And that's, that's a, a decent, it's actually a very repetitive, it seems like it's boring, but if, you've, if you put the, a good enough reason to, to do the activity and everything else with it, um, you could buy some color tabs at the store, get some colored tabs, work with some sheets that you've already worked on, and uh, um, color tab them so that they have it, and then mix them all up and put that there. The other one that people do, I have not written down here yet, is um, mixed up scripts. So you take a script and you re-number uh, the scripts and pages because they're all out of order. And that's an activity that you can do that's very valuable that you do the, the, the whole thing there. Um, <laughs> Uh, typing, the next one is typing page notes. So you can type page notes. So um, I have like seriously way, I have so many notes and I, if I sat down and typed them all up, because um, the emotional preparation book that, I, that, I'm, that I've written is, uh, is without those notes. That's without the class notes. I, I did that separately. And I, at one point, I'll sit down with my notes from classes and assemble something or not, or just, or just get them in digital format. So what if I was doing that at one point when I do that or ask somebody to do that and help me, um, which may not be possible because of the handwriting. But um, basically, they would have to sit and they would have to dictate the, the type, the typing on the notes to be able to get every single word of the notes. So that would be the way to handle that. Typing page notes is what it's called on the list. Um, okay, weaving a straw hat. Uh, that's pretty interesting. There are um, some uh, South American communities that their entire livelihood is weaving. So, you know, some of these, some people, and they've built up businesses that are selling their woven hats. So if you look at some of those communities and see really how to be able to weave the hat and what materials that you need to have and how to be able to weave the hat, 
Now, this comes to an interesting point because you can start your activities depending upon your teacher because some teachers don't want this. And if, you, and if your teacher doesn't want something, just try and okay. But uh, some teachers are very keen and they would like you to be able to start your independent activities, your independent doing, in your own rehearsals at home, and then bring in the, the, the key parts of it in, in your acting work. So if you were working on a, building up a, a straw hat, you might work to do that independent activity for, I don't know, like it could might maybe even a couple of hours to be able to get all the supplies out be able to work and you're starting to get the weaving done and you're working on the weaving of the of the of the hat um, that would be that would be fine I mean maybe you only work on it for a half an hour but then you bring in that activity that you're already working on and you start to do the involvement and what will happen is all of the stuff that you built up to be able to actually put into your work the motivation and the, the consequence all that you have to be careful working with consequence because they're logical so you want to be able to work with the consequence that's motivating you. And then you also want to work separately with motivation. You want to bring motivation and you want to be able to bring in this. And some people just say it's called bringing in a reason. And that's fair. But, you know, different people have different ways of explaining this. But the reasons sometimes can get too logical. Um, all right. So we have repairing a chair. So that's a great activity. You can repair a chair in many different ways. Um, okay. Balancing rock sculpture. So you can bounce a rock sculpture. So you have one rock and you balance it on top of the other rock. And you're balancing the rock sculpture. And that would be great. That would be really great. Uh, and you can also um, glue balanced rock sculpture together as a separate activity. So the one activity you have, you could be balancing the different rock sculptures, whichever way. The next one you could have, you could literally have the, the test, your, your, Ability, you're testing your ability. You are going to work to put energy into achieving gluing one rock on top of another rock and then put another rock on top of another rock, maybe a fourth. And and you make a rock sculpture. So you can you can balance rocks as activities to see if you can now when you balance rocks, it is more involved than it actually looks. You're not just doing a trial by error. You might have to get some sandpaper. You get some um, some tools, some some digging tools, so you can dig out the rock. And you're going to have to really work that rock, so you can get one to balance on top of the other. So it's not as simple as just balancing the rocks. Now I don't think I've ever seen this activity. I know for a fact I haven't seen this activity, and I've seen I've seen a lot of work. So it it's another it's very interesting. Um, but you want to get the tools together, you have to do that. Now, next one is cleaning jewelry. Now, you could be cleaning the jewel, but most likely you're cleaning the silver, or you're cleaning the, the, the jewelry. Now, that would involve getting the jewelry set, you want to get uh, um, something that can clean the silver, silver polish. Um, you can also take um, cleaning a silver um, spoon or knife. So you, you take a, a silver spoon or a knife and you, you take the silver solution and you have to work it out and be very detailed, try and polish it and clean it and get all those years of, of, of uh, debris out of it. Okay. Event decoration. Now, this is a, a great one. Now, there's obviously there's like what 25 
events a year or something like that. It's holidays a year. And uh, so if, if you're working with event decoration and you're making a film, you're including the independent activities or the independent doings, right, in the, in the acting, then you want to be able to have event decoration and you can choose like what event it is and like is it a birthday, is it a funeral, is it a um, holiday, is it, um, uh, I don't know, it could be a party for somebody uh, that you're doing an event decoration for and um, oh gosh, I mean there's so many different examples of these that I've seen over the years, many, many, many times. Uh, a lot of times people just say happy birthday and they're doing a birthday celebration. But you can do all kinds of things. You could be celebrating a fiesta. You could be um, uh, celebrating somebody getting a job. You could be um, celebrating, um, this is all under event decoration. Um, you could be celebrating somebody losing a job. Maybe they've retired and on purpose, you know, that they're done with their job and they're happy and they're having a retirement party. So you're, 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 you're decorating for the retirement party. Now, if you add these activities up and you start getting your actors involved like that, it's going to be much more interesting. Now, it's going to be a little bit more complicated for the filming, depending upon how how skilled you are, and then there's an adjustment of skill as to being able to, how to be able to, you know, get all that action. But generally, it's going to be enthusiastic to be able to include these. But these are some great. You don't don't just think of event decoration as a as a happy birthday, um, but think of an event decoration as like, you know, can you celebrate a, a retirement party? Can you celebrate a, a promotion at the law firm? Um, can you celebrate that, um, I don't know, you could celebrate the fact that you've gotten um, uh, some stock or some things gone up at a, high, a higher price and there's a decoration to be able to put the, the, that up. Um, that would be all great, great things. Okay, next one is conditioning horse range. So there is a task that's involving horse reins where you condition the leather and you would be having to basically, you get the material and you condition the horse reins so that you got the, the they're not going to, it's not going to break as easily if you condition the reins of the horse. So you do that with the leather. Hmm. This is an interesting one. You could get a plane of wood and make a wooden sword. That sounds fun, right? Very, it's very involved. You get a piece of wood, chip away. Now, again, this is something that you can work on before you come to classroom. You know, and then bring that activity to be able to complete or work to be able to complete it in the class, in the in the activity. So in your in your ins and outs or in your uh, what they call now doors activities. Ceramic mold mug. Um, oh yeah, you could mold a ceramic mud, uh, mug mug like a mug for a coffee mug, and. Um, Now there's a few different ways you could do that, uh, and I'll uh, I'll have some some ways listed here. But for now, it's mold ceramic mug. So you're you're basically gonna mold the ceramic mug, uh, and then you you can take it to the kin, and then they can um, solidify it in their oven, and, and then you'll have a a, a mug. Uh, 